Tuesday evening. I think it's a, let me change my network, um, but uh, the code of one professor. Yes, thank you, Toera, for coming me. Yet another exciting Wednesday evening. This time it's about how we manage our loneliness, those times when we are alone. It's so easy managing your time when you're with other people, and when you're alone, then you suddenly wonder, what, what am I going to do all this time? So I think today um, we're going to hear how we can make best use of that time so that we're enriched, whether we are alone or we are with other people. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for this. Once again, another opportunity to listen uh, to you as you speak through uh, Canon Ruth um, uh, Senyonyi. We want to pray, Lord, that uh, yes, uh, there will be many of us listening in and that as we listen in this, what we listen will change us, uh, Lord, that it will help us to manage those times when we are alone uh, so that those are edifying times, they are times which build us up uh, emotionally, physically, spiritually. And on Dr. Dr. Ritson, and you're welcome to take. Uh, Dr. Had also, you have also gone off. Couldn't see you. We couldn't hear you. Have I gone off? Went off for a few minutes. Yes. <laughs> I think I'm back. You're welcome, Dr. Ruth Senyonyi. Thank you. I'm glad You're welcome, to Ruth. this evening and uh, today we are going to talk about self-care. We thought that our series will be self-care. So we are really looking at taking care of you as an individual. And one of the things we are looking at today is managing loneliness. Managing loneliness. Let me just open up my and share my screen. Okay, this is a topic that is not normally talked about, but I think everybody experiences it one time or other. So it is good to know how to manage it. And um, so we shall start with a prayer. I don't know whether doctor had prayed, but let's just say a, a short word of prayer. Father, we want to thank you so much for this time that you've given us. We pray that um, we will learn to hear from you how to manage some of these things that do come in our lives for one reason or another. We pray for those who are yet to join us. We pray that they may come quickly. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody says, Amen. 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 So, managing loneliness. I'll begin with uh, a few definitions. Um, there are very many definitions. So, I, I, I picked out a few that will bring out what exactly that would mean. It can be defined as a state of mind when where one feels empty, alone, and unwanted. Can also be a painful, a painful kind of inner emptiness. So there is empty again. And then it goes on to say a cognitive discomfort of perception of being alone. Sometimes when you say cognitive, it is in the head 
I'm thinking about it. And yet you might be in a big crowd, crowded room, but you are feeling that aloneness still. So we cannot say that loneliness is a result of being alone or not having anybody around you. Sometimes it is not always associated with being alone. And then another one is where we have a lack of or a craving for intimacy or human contact. This can normally happen at a time, let's say you're supposed to be married, no one is coming to tell you anything. So that lack of intimacy or your family has gone away from you, they are not with you, something like that. And then a feeling of being left out is another one. As I said, there are quite a number of definitions. A state of being unseen or unnoticed. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where nobody knows that you are there. Um, spiritually, physically, relationally, mentally, or emotionally. And sometimes um, I think we've felt a bit of this, especially when we retired. You know, when you retire from something, people meet you or you are at a ceremony and they see you and they don't know exactly how to talk about you. They don't know how to, you know, if I say Ruth and John Senyoni, who are they? You know, what, what are they now? So somehow they jump over you and, and don't look at you. So sometimes that is being unseen and being unnoticed and it can lead into a state of loneliness. That I'm in this crowd of people, but I'm really alone. It can be driven by a lack of purpose or identity. We've talked about purpose and identity in all our talks. And I think we'll keep repeating some of these things because if you don't have purpose, then you, you, you can really be very lonely. You don't know where you are going or a lack of a meaningful relationship. Sometimes it is marked by hopelessness and the feeling one has when their need for social contact is not made met. Um, where we are overwhelmed by human information. Sometimes people are really affected. Like now there is the Gaza and the Palestine and the Israel war happening. And, you know, there are so many WhatsApps coming. One time I had an, an, an incident where a lady sent um, some soldiers being burnt and it was right from the time they set the fire until they died. Now you are watching that and that can overwhelm you. So it's like you can easily pull back into something that you shouldn't be watching. So news, crisis, negative talk can overwhelm people and they pull back into loneliness. It also goes on to explain that it, it's a universal human emotion that is unique to each individual. It comes in different ways to each individual. It doesn't come in exactly the same way. And then it's usually associated with poor social skills, usually associated with those who are introverts. They are very much, they do a lot of thinking inside and also with depression, as we shall see later. And it can also be a result of abandonment by other people. So I don't know which of those you have gone through. Now, social isolation causes about 29% of all deaths. Many, including children, are lonely excuse me, because they have no meaningful relationships. And we shall also see that with technology. Loneliness can and leads to isolation because you become disconnected socially, physically, mentally, all those things that we have mentioned, and it can lead to a lot of isolation. Mm -hmm. It may last for a short time or can persist throughout your life. So you might have short times where I'm lonely, then it's over. But there are people who go through this all their life. And so it's important to be able to manage it before it becomes something that persists throughout your life. Loneliness peaks or comes to a, 
you know, a very high peak during teenage and young adult times. This is where there are a lot of changes happening. And sometimes the teenager or the young adult does not know how to deal with those changes. It also occurs frequently in those who are living alone. It also is common among the elderly who lose a spouse, because if you've had a spouse for 40 years, 50 years, and then that spouse leaves, it is very hard to replace or very hard to put in place that person who has gone. It is also common, loneliness is common, where there is marital tension, because if there is tension between the two of you, you tend to isolate yourself. You tend to move away from the other person. It also thrives in poor mental health conditions where if your health is not doing well, it can lead to disorders, it can lead to depression, and again, it can lead to isolation. So those things, isolation, depression, uh, uh, poor mental health, loss, death, all those and change can lead to that. So we are going to look at, okay, and also personality factors introverts are more prone to the isolation and loneliness because they don't talk a lot. You, you've heard of people who they say, oh, that one doesn't talk. But actually, in the end, they become very lonely because they don't get to talk about what's going on or about the news. They just process and process everything inside alone, which can also lead to loneliness. Now, I'm going to go into the so the causes, there are very many causes, about five types of causes. And we begin with the social causes. Social, we begin with technology. These days, the people are more, spend a lot of time on phones and computers and the internet. And it can lead to social isolation because we are usually away from face-to-face -face contact. And so there is no relationship building. Many times, you know, even I, I remember yesterday we had an online meeting with some people who were talking to uh, in premarital counseling. But as soon as we said, okay, bye, shoo, everybody disappeared. Even now when we are finishing, everybody will go. However much you want to, you saw your friend or saw the other one, you can't see them. You can't talk to them. And many of the young people now do not actually do phone calls. They do messaging. So there's a lot of messaging and therefore the, the isolation comes because I am not seeing somebody face to face. There's no human contact. So some many people go online for social contact and they end up more lonely because sometimes they, are, they, 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 they want to talk to someone and that person is not available or that person is bullying them, something like that. So technology makes people feel smaller. It makes people feel less noticed less needed and less important. I think you've all felt that I'm not as important as a, a friend that I see face to face. Another cause is where we have low quality social relationships and lifestyles that promote individualism and isolation. Right now we live in houses with fences and walls. They are so high, they have electric electricity on them. You have guards, nobody can come in. So that also, you can't now just walk to someone's house and say, I've come to visit. They'll even say, what's wrong with you? Why have you come? Why didn't you tell me you are coming? You know, so the type of lifestyle that we, 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 we lead is promoting that, is promoting aloneness, is promoting loneliness. Then we go to the next, um, it's still under um, causes. Uh, developmental causes, that's what we call them, where we are separated from those who we are attached to. In counseling, we have a, a, a something that is called attachment theory, for example, or bonding, where when a child is born, they know their mother and father. That's, that attachment is very, very strong. And so if the child is separated from its parents, that we call that a loss. If a person dies and they've been very close to you, the bereavement, if somebody leaves because of divorce or abandons you or for some reason or neglects you, it does cause a lot of anxiety. You can see a child when the mother is going to work, that is the attachment. So when that attachment has been broken or that attachment has been lost, it causes 
loneliness. And then lack of acceptance in a place or in a workplace or in a school or being ignored. I'm sure you've seen children that have been ignored for one thing or another. Maybe they, their dress code is not very good. Maybe they are, they are not very, uh, very beautiful. I remember there was a girl while we were on campus. She was not really very nice looking, if I may call it that. But they had named her, the, the, the men, the boys on campus, had given her a name. And every time she walked, everybody would sing that name. It was really horrible for her. I don't even know how she survived. But so lack of acceptance of a person, you know, sometimes it's lack of acceptance in marriage. You know, someone marries you and then in the end, they don't really like being with you. So you feel a, a sense of rejection. And then there are people who, who because of age, they are ignored, I'm sure. Uh, there is a, a teacher of mine, I think I met him the other day, and he was in a taxi. So I said, where did you leave your car? He said, ah, I'm tired of driving my car because everybody is honing me and saying, Muse, give us, give us that, so the, the car. Give us, give us the car. We need to meet you. Give us nice. the car. And, you know, they are feeling um like... You are too old to be driving. Let us drive you. And he said that gets to him. So he said he does not drive his car and is in a taxi. So you can see that lack, lack of acceptance, you know, and being ignored. Some people are bullied, so they don't have that sense of belonging. Where do I belong? I've been rejected. And then there are those who, are, who we call social misfits. They don't know how to relate to others. Sometimes it's because of the way you you have been brought up, sorry, uh oh, yeah. Sometimes it is the way you have you have been relating to others, and sometimes the way your your skin looks, or things like that. So social misfits, and then situational causes. Loneliness increases in times of life change and turmoil. When there is any kind of change, let's say you are moving to new locations, maybe you are being retired, maybe you are changing jobs, maybe you are going abroad, it can also lead to loneliness. It doesn't always do that, but many people are prone to loneliness when they are moving to new locations. If I, if, ah, I can give an example, when we moved to the US many years ago, the children were still very young. Uh, I think, uh, John Paul was one and a half years old. So here I am in a country, very, very cold with two children. And I, I have no idea how to deal with the cold. I have no idea how to dress. I have no, no idea what they do. Someone had told me, if you want to know how cold Chicago is, put your head in the freezer. So I put my head in the freezer. But when I got to Chicago, the cold was nothing that I could even ever think of. So that moving to a new location, it really worked on me for some for some months. Because like I couldn't manage it. Nobody I knew, they were all doing their own things. So sometimes it can lead to loneliness. Then also what we call life situational changes, where young people are moving away from home for the first time, maybe to go to high school or to go to university or to school abroad. This That's why we say teenage and young adults find some problems. Why? Because of that. Then you have people who are like foreigners. I was a foreigner in Chicago. There are foreigners here in Uganda or old people living alone. Those are situational causes. I'm alone because I'm old. I'm a foreigner here because I've come to work in this country. Or people with disease and long-term illnesses. People forget you after, you know, they say, oh, you are sick, I'll come and visit you. So they come, you get out of hospital, you go home and then they forget. If it is a 10 year illness, you will not see anybody coming to visit you so long so you become really lonely and people don't you don't see people then other situational changes um 
different people with different skin color or handicapped, you know, someone in a wheelchair or someone who is not able to walk, they are prone to isolation and discrimination. There are those who are being parents for the first time or being parent for the fourth time and nobody's coming to see you or being parent in a new place that you are not sure of. Then what there are what we call psychological or internal causes. If you see that little picture where you are saying, I can't, I must not make a mistake, I'm not worthy, you are talking to yourself internally that there's something going on that you should not should not be happening. And we call that low self-esteem, a low opinion of who you are, and you underestimate your worth, you withdraw. Sometimes it is pride. You are, you think too highly of yourself, and so you don't associate with people who are around you. Sometimes you are feeling weak and shy, and you push people away. Then we have what we call self-defeating -de attitudes. Some people are very competitive. I think it was one of my grandchildren who was telling me they have somebody they go to school with, and he's so, so, so competitive. He doesn't want anybody to get one mark more than him, you know? He has to be the winner all the time. So that competitive spirit, sometimes everybody leaves you up there and you become very lonely instead of helping others. And I remember even when we were at school, there used to be people who would do that. They wouldn't want to help anybody. They wanted to be the only ones who knew what they were doing. And then we had others who were very helpful. They could never be lonely. They were, we were always asking for help from them. So there are those who are struggling for self-sufficiency. They want to get to the top. They want to be alone. They want to have everything that so that they don't depend on anybody. I'm going to give a talk on that this, this Friday. And I've been trying to, to, to think how people who are self-sufficient sometimes suffer. And that is one thing that happens to them. They become lonely. Then there are those who hold grudges or those who demand attention or those who are overly critical. We sometimes call it the leader syndrome, where you have that critic and authoritarian attitude. You think that everybody should be criticized because you are the leader. And so you drive people away from you. Instead of people being drawn to you, they are thrown away. They say they don't want to call you. They don't want to invite you for anything because you are very critical. So we need to be careful about our attitude. Other psychological causes, if you are depressed, then you are high, it's highly possible that you'll be lonely because depression also brings you down really low in the way you think, in what, what you think about yourself and what you're doing. And if you are a poor communicator and then lack of control of your circumstances, maybe you are abandoned, you are in prison, you are confined. So those circumstances where you really can't do anything about it, can lead to loneliness. There are many people who are married and their spouses, especially men, refuse them to work, refuse them to go to the market, refuse them to do anything. They, have, they are confined in the house and they don't have any money or they don't have an economic independence. So they really can't do anything about it. Then where there is hostility, where there's persecution, or where there is violence. There are many homes where there is domestic violence. And you know, it's, we usually um, draw a circle and say, there is a, a, a cycle of domestic violence. He hits you today, and then he loves you tomorrow. And then you walk on eggshells, then he hits you again. So it goes round like that. And you don't know when, when it is coming. So you are really lonely because you are trying to protect yourself from being abused again. So where there is hostility, where there is fear, so that, that, that loneliness happens. So now what does the Bible have to say about loneliness? I think it's clear that God realized that human beings need other human beings to function effectively. And if you remember in Genesis, he, he said, after he had created everything, he said, hmm, it is not good for man to be alone. He had made man. But now he's like, it's not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable or fit for him. So he realized that we actually need somebody so that we are not lonely. He realized he was lonely. That's where he, that's where the loneliness started. And he crafted something to take away that loneliness. 
Then um, in the Bible, there is also need for continuous relationship. As we see, many people are relating and talking to him and have fellowship with God. And then Jesus on the cross, he felt abandoned. He felt lonely. And he said, my Lord, my God, why have you forsaken me? He said, if, if you can take this cup away from me. And then at the end, he said, why have you forsaken me? So for a moment, there was a separation there and he felt really lonely. But I must mention that we also have times in the Bible, which we call solitude, times for retreating to pray and fast and seek the Lord in solitude, in, 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 you know, away from other people. It is not, not really loneliness, that one. It's a bit different. So the spiritual causes, therefore, um, it is St. Augustine who said this prayer, said, our hearts are restless until they find rest in thee. So it's like our man, God made us in a way that we are restless until we find rest in him. And then secondly, sin alienates us from God and can actually make us lonely you imagine if you are christian and then all of a sudden you are in, you are in sin Just on, on one of our whatsapp i think that guy has a whatsapp they sent something about a, a child who died during exams of s4 she was 17 and uh, at the funeral there was not a teacher there was not a student and people were like where are the friends where are the people from school and someone said well she was doing an abortion for her to die. That's why the school has, has refrained from coming. So you see, when we do things, we are alienated. We sin and everybody cuts us off, okay? So we, there's also people who ignore God. They pretend that he's not there. And you become very lonely because without God, really, I don't think you can do anything. And we need to know that. We have a couple of people that I know. I think I know now about four people who have said there is no God. Those people are in the Western world. But now in Uganda, for me, I know four people who have come and told me, for me, I don't believe in God. And I'm like, do you see what I see? Do you see the sky? Do you see this? Said, yeah, but God is not there. So when we ignore God, you become a very lonely person. What happens to you? So you can't escape from his sight. You can't hide from the creator. Remember what Adam and Eve did? This, the, God asked them, where are you? And they said, we had you coming in the garden and we hid. So you must have eaten from the tree. Yeah. So you can't really escape from his sight. And when we look at David and Jeremiah, I think you can see their loneliness. There was a lot of things that were happening to David. He was being pursued by his son, Absalom, and his, and his friend's father, and um, Jonathan's father, and he didn't like it at all. So Psalm 102, from verse 3 to 11, it explains what he was going through at that time. My bones are burning like furnace. My bones cling to my flesh. I am sleepless like a lonely sparrow. I am lonely. That is verse seven. I am crying. My eating is affected. So sometimes when, because he had to hide in a cave alone somewhere, away from, you know, the things that he knows because he was running away from the people who loved him. Okay. So that is David. And then lamentations in Jeremiah. Jeremiah was the one who was talking. He said, that, that is Jeremiah 3, brought me into darkness without any light. He was, he was put into places where he couldn't see anybody. You know? I dwell in darkness like long dead. So that's how he describes himself. My skin is wasting away. I'm bitter and, and talked about hardship and tribulation. He's walled in without any escape. He's weighed down with heavy chains. The, the paths that he knows are blocked. The, the paths are crooked and he feels mangled. Mangled is like when somebody, you know, like mangling of, of posho, you know, that's how he feels. And you know, in Psalm 120, verse 13, 
It says, you will arise and have pity on Zion. It is time to favor her. I wanted to put that in that in times of loneliness, we should look up to God and he will arise. He will surely arise and he will favor us. There is a song which says, arise, 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 take your place. That is God, come, arise. He will arise and he'll have pity on us and it will be time for our favor. So the spiritual, you don't have to ignore God. Then we go to the signs and symptoms. What are the signs and symptoms of loneliness? There's a feeling of sadness and emptiness and disconnectedness, a, a sign of feeling left out and isolated, feeling misunderstood. My voice is not heard and I have no voice actually. And of course you've heard of people um, being asked to speak for others because they have no voice. For example, we speak for the children that have no voice, that are, are being aborted. That's one of the, the campaigns that I do. I speak for this child. I go out and say, people, you should never have an abortion. So there are people with no voice, but now we are talking about loneliness. You feel you have no voice. Insecure, insomnia, meaning somebody who is not able to sleep, feelings of worthlessness. And I talked about self-esteem there, feelings of worthlessness and withdrawal from friends and social connections. So loneliness pulls you further and further away from people who could have helped you. And then when we look at the effects, some of these words are kind of similar, effects, causes, what and what, but effects, it's like you have no one to turn to. You are disconnected. It can lead to anxiety. It can lead to stress. It can lead to overdose. You know, you are like, ah, let me take these tablets and, and die, you know? But it can also lead to sexual promiscuity. You can go on the street and sell your body. You know, yesterday I was talking to, to medical, the, medic, the medical people in UCU Medical School who are talking about sex, sexuality, and relationships. And I said, some of you hawk yourselves, you know, hawking, where you go around saying, chikumi, 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 chikumi. Some of you, the way you dress is really hawking yourself. And sometimes in times of loneliness, you want to attract people to you. So the way you dress, so that people can look at you, so that people can say something to you because you are lonely. So those are the effects sometimes. So when you see someone who is dressed badly, or not, you know, is attracting attention and sometimes even leading to prostitution. Now, it also has an effect on our mental health. Okay, you can see that, that with anxiety, grief, stress, you know, depression, panic, shame, that little head there. But you can easily move into alcohol and drug misuse, antisocial behavior, violence. This is where people turn to pornography. A lot of people because of COVID and being alone and not being able to work and spending long time, a long, long time in, tech, in, in, in their phones and their computers have turned to pornography. So loneliness has caused that antisocial behavior. And then it also leads to decreased memory and learning. So it affects the way you go to school. If you are lonely, the likelihood of you doing very well in class becomes less and less. Depression, we've talked about it. Suicidal ideation, meaning that you have ideas about how to commit suicide. And sometimes you even attempt. And sometimes it leads to death. And then you, can, you are at risk for diseases like diabetes, heart disease, dementia. So these are long-term things, but they are very real. The impact. The mortality that I talked about increases, then it puts people at greater risk because of poor mental health. And then you lose confidence in yourself because you have low self-esteem. So it is associated with blood pressure and acute stress responses. We've talked about the sleep quality and lower educational attainment. And also you are not productive as you should be if you are working or a lecturer. So as a counselor, how would I deal with this whole situation? How do I counsel for loneliness? One, the person who is in front of me or the client must be able to recognize the signs of loneliness. 
Have I withdrawn? Are there signs of depression? Is there some kind of sadness? I should be able to recognize that. Secondly, when I recognize that, I need to admit the problem and acknowledge that, yes, I, I am lonely and this is what it has done to me. You know, what are some of the causes that have been brought up? We've looked at the social, the developmental, the psychological, the situational, spiritual. So what is it for me? Is it social? Is it developmental? Have I moved away from somewhere? Have I been in a new place? What then? Okay, then after we've known all that, then we are able to handle it because there's, I mean, I can't, I can't talk about one thing, but it's like, if you find out what the situation is, then you are able to change the thinking and the attitude. See, you are able to challenge your negative thinking patterns. Now, sometimes it could be because of your low self-esteem. So it's important to improve your self-esteem. We've talked earlier about self-esteem. So self-esteem includes many things. And so it's important to look at, are you negative? Your character, your behavior, and the way you, you, you think, the cognitive, deal with them if they are negative you know, negative in that, I am bad, I am terrible, everything I do is not worth it, those kind of things. So we took up to look into self-talk. How do you talk to yourself? Sometimes you demean yourself. You do something and say, I am so stupid. Oh, I am uh, worthless. Oh, you know, so you, you need to Learn to give a pat on your back, how well you have done, even when things are all people around you are saying that you are not good enough. But what do you think about you? So improving that so that it is not negative. And then, and sometimes this comes out of something that has happened to you in the past. Maybe you are raped, maybe you, you took a wrong decision, maybe you failed the exam, and so you are hammering yourself on the head every day, some bad and bad and bad and bad, and you are disappearing into the into the, the earth. But now I want you to say, I'm not hammering myself, I'm instead lifting myself up. I'm an important person. I am in front of God. He looks at me. He, you know, he I am the apple of his eye, I'm his best friend. You know, that's how you start naming yourself. So trust yourself, learn to trust yourself before you even trust other people. And then pamper yourself. You can take yourself out, you can buy yourself an ice cream, you can buy yourself a cake. If it's your birthday, go and make a cake and put on happy birthday, Ruth. If nobody is going to do it for you, do it for yourself. You know? If you need to, to buy yourself a nice cup, go and buy it with your name on it and say, I love you, Ruth, you know? And put it there and look at it and you're like, wow, this is me. I love myself. I'm pampering me. I have done well. I passed this exam and I'm, and I'm rewarding myself because nobody else is going to do that. So that's part of you being your own best friend. Are you, are you a friend of you? If we left you with yourself, would you know what to do? Or you would be like, I don't know this person. I don't know what she wants. I, uh, then you go to sleep. So you spend a lot of time sleeping because you don't have, you don't know how to deal with yourself. Let's say you've gone for a workshop in Nairobi for one week and you move away from your family, your father, your mother, or your wife, or your children, and you are alone in a room. What do you do with you? You know, do you feel like I have to call everybody around the world because I'm alone here? No, it's like, fine, you can actually do well with yourself. So be your own best friend and take care of you. Forgive yourself daily. Many times we do, we do many mistakes. Don't beat yourself up. Laugh at your own silly mistakes and say, is, is it me who really did that? And just give it a laugh and let it pass. So avoid comparing yourself. We are so different, you know? When I was on campus, there were, they were, they were students who had cars. I didn't have a car. Who would change, you know, they, they, we have a lecture in the afternoon, they would come back in a different dress, different shoes. <laughs> and you know, you are like, when am I ever going to get there? So if you start comparing yourself, you might become really, really sad. So avoid comparison. That will improve your self-esteem. Then 
still change behavior. There's some behavior that is not good for you. We've mentioned it above, up there. So alter it, correct it. Sometimes you might have to remove yourself from the situation. If you are being harassed, if you are being kept under lock and key, you need to remove yourself from the situation. You need to go and find help. If there is domestic violence, if somebody is abusing you, if the, the, the classmate is doing, go and report. And then spend more time with people, interact with them, take risks with knowing and making friends. We also, by the way, in counseling, we also teach how to make friends. If you don't know how to make friends, it's, it, you know, we teach you how to do that. Some people don't know how to make friends. So even if it is in the market, go and greet people in the market and find out how they are. Border, border guys, they just say hello every time you pass and they become your friends. People you pass by every day, go and do something with them. It would help, okay? So spend more time with other people. As I was preparing, um, thinking about spiritual needs. This song came to me. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, he sheds glory on our way. When we do his will, goodwill, he abides with us. He's with us and, and he's there with us. I loved it because it's, it's, it takes away, when we abide in Christ, he takes away our loneliness. I think some of you may know the song. You can sing with me, even though you are not on, on microphone. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt, nor a fear, not a sigh, nor a tear, can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. So when we walk with the Lord, he takes care. He, when we abide with him, even when there is trouble, his smile drives it away. Isn't that wonderful? So in spiritual, spiritually, love unconditionally, that's what the Bible tells us. Love, there are people who are not lovable, but he says, love them unconditionally. Be at peace with those who are around you. Confess your sins. Some of you have sinned and you have refused to confess your sins. So learn to, to walk and confess your sins to one another. That's what the Bible says. Then live in righteousness. Always want to do the right thing every single day. I keep telling people that I love the verse that says that. Um, the the what's the word the, the the one who is righteous does much avails much okay so i tell people that when i pray for them because i know that i'm walking with the lord right and i am righteous i call myself righteous not because i am so good but because the lord has given me the righteousness has dressed me up in that righteousness so i want to live that every day i want to walk with him uh-huh so be close to Jesus. He'll be your best companion, even when nobody wants you, even when you are aging like we are, or when you are elderly, or when you have lost your spouse, he will be your companion ever. He will not let you go. Then attend church and fellowship and serve. Don't just sit in the pews. Give yourself up to do something. Maybe it is, it is ushering, or maybe it is cleaning the, you know, do something. And then I talked about solitude, spend time with him, prayer and fasting, the, the ones who call spiritual disciplines. Make sure that they are part of your life. You pray, you read your Bible and all those things. So now as I end, what are the tips to end loneliness? Some of them may be repeated, but just for emphasis, spend time with people, with family, with friends. Go visit your mother, go visit your father, go visit your children, 
grandchildren, find them, go visit your friends, make connections. You can go to a restaurant regularly. When you are there, engage and talk with staff and the people you meet. Be thankful. Find and reignite your passion. What is your passion? What is your hobby? And get involved in it. Is it cooking? Is it coloring? Is it a puzzle? Is it playing golf? Is it playing netball? What is it? Playing Scrabble, playing Monopoly, you know? So it reignite your passion. For me, I think my passion now is just talking to people who have problems. And I find that, you know, I really like doing that. And uh, I, I thank God for it. Get out into the world. You can travel. You can go and see new places. You know, we've visited a number of countries over time, my husband and I. We've been to Dubai. We've been to China. We've been to the U.S. We have been to, where else have we been? <laughs> we've been to many places, Kenya, Rwanda, you know. So go. Cool. Sometimes some of you are waiting for someone to pay for you. But if you want to go to Mombasa, I hear people actually on the radio announcing, you know, some good prices for, for tours for 10 days. And you get, so you start saving, even if it takes you three years and say, for me, I will go and see that new place. I will go to Nairobi. Nairobi is very near and it is accessible. Mombasa, have you been there? Dar es Salaam, have you been there? Rwanda is just next door. You can even go by bus. So go to see places, you know, be, you know, get up and don't wait for people to find you. You go and find people. Volunteer in community. You can go to Sanyu Baby's home. There are very many babies there that need to be washed every day. You can go early, wash them, put on their diapers, feed them, and then go to work. Or in the evening, they also need to be washed. So volunteer. And then if necessary, you need to also seek help. Physical activity is another very good thing of managing loneliness. So exercise, very good, but also gardening and digging, grow, seeing plants grow. Some people really like that. So spend time with plants, talk to them. Actually, when you talk to them, that's what people say me, I'm not a very good plant person. Talk to them and as you talk to them, I think Olivia, one of our daughters is very good at that. And she has so many nice plants and they don't die, you know? Learn to be your own best friend. I've already talked about that a little bit. And then there's something that we call talk therapy and self-care, okay? Take care of yourself. Talk therapy means that you are going to talk about your personal life. What are your fears? What are the failed relationships? What are the traumatic experiences? What are your emotions right now? How do you feel when you have lost somebody? What are the guilt things? What is the sadness, the heartaches, the confusion, the anger? Talk to someone and that's what I do. Mine becomes a safe space. And I love it when people say, your place, your counseling center is nice and quiet and we love it here. It, you, you know, you feel immediately you get in, you feel safe. And it is called Bethel. Why? Because Bethel means the house of God. When you enter, it's like you are entering the house of God and, I, and, and gives them safe space to be able to do that. Now, we should also try as much as possible to prevent. So if you haven't gone into loneliness, we need to prevent. Why? One, strengthen your, your, your local church, your participation, small group meetings in your home, open up your home to those meetings, to community projects, be the one to say, can we start a project of planting, maybe cassava or something like that. Welcome new people, you know, have people be, be able to, 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 to be excited by being in your church. Bible study, you know, now we have cell groups. Now, when it comes to your work or your class, there should be social interactions. Do you know all the people in your class? Do you know when their birthdays are? You know, these are things you can suggest that as a class, let's celebrate birthdays. Let's just buy a piece of cake. You know, these days they sell a slice of cake and you just do that for your, for your classmate. Give her the cake in class and life goes on. When, when I was teaching, this, this semester I haven't taught, I've been teaching at UCU. And you know, this is what I would do. Every time I come to class, I would bring them bananas. 
and she so brought you some bananas. Sometimes I would buy, I think I also bought Kabalagala, but I would mostly buy bananas because that was a safe thing for everybody. And, you know, at the end of the semester, I would invite everyone to my home for, for lunch. Now that was a gesture. I got to know these people a little more because of those little things. So class, social interactions, recognitions and rewards. If somebody has performed very well, you put your resources together and buy them a gift. If they have had a baby, go to their home and see the child, go to the hospital and take all these balloons that we see and cards and sign as a class or as a work. Then managing change. I talk so much about transitions and change, change management. And it's like when you are going to high school from P7 to S1, it is a very stressful thing. From S4 to S5, very stressful. S6 to university, whoa. From university to whatever you are going to do, from the course into the workplace, all those are transitions, even transitions to, 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 to old age or retirement. They should be managed well. So talking about those things helps people to manage them. Then uh, uh, building your self-esteem before it, it becomes low self-esteem, you keep building it so that you have a uh, positive self-esteem. And then growing spiritually. This is a question I like asking at the workplace because there's a, <laughs> there's a question when we are doing interviews for Christian organizations, there's a question that always comes up. Mm -hmm. Your spiritual growth, how do you grow? Your, how do you grow yourself in Christ? And some people say, well, you see, when I have problems, that's when I do this, that's when I pray. Then you know that one will not be a good, a good person. It's like, what do I do on a daily basis to make sure that I'm close to God, that I spend time with him, I talk to him, I pray to him, I spend time praying for other people, I'm in fellowship with other people. That's what it, it ensures that you, you are growing spiritually. And this is a verse I want you to learn. I want you to pick up. It's from Isaiah 41, verse 10. And if you can memorize it, that will be nice. Because every time you are feeling lonely, you are going to that place. Just say this verse. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. May the Lord bless you as you go out and make sure that you do not become lonely. Thank you so much for listening.